Most companies sell more than one product, so our next topic will be calculating the break-even point or the sales required to reach a target profit for a company with more than one product. Sales price and variable costs differ for each product, so each product makes a different contribution to profits. The same CVP formulas we used earlier can apply to a company with multiple products. To calculate the break-even point for the company, we must compute the weighted average contribution margin of all the company's products. The sales mix provides the weights that make up total product sales. Sales mix, or product mix, is a combination of products that make up total sales. For example, let's say a company sold 6,000 cell phones and 2,000 cell phone cases. They would have a sales mix of 6,000 to 2,000 cell phones to cell phone cases. To break this down into more manageable numbers, we would divide both sides by 1,000 to get a sales mix of 6 to 2. Or we can convert it to the least common ratio, which would give us three cell phones sold for every one cell phone case sold. Now all three of these sales mixes are the same ratio. So when we work the problem, we could use 6,000 to 2,000, or six to two, or three to one. Another alternative way to look at this company's sales mix is to say 75% of their sales are cell phones. 6,000 cell phones divided by the total number of items they sold, which was 8,000. And 25% of their sales are cell phone cases. So now we're going to calculate the break-even point for a company that has two products. The company, called the Cat's Meow, sells two different types of cat furniture. The first is a cat bed. The sales price of the cat bed is $44. The cost of the cat bed is $24. This is, of course, a variable cost. The company sold 6,000 cat beds. Now the other product is a scratching post. The scratching post sells for $100 each and costs the company $30 each. This is, of course, a variable cost. And they sold 4,000 scratching posts. Going back to the cat beds, what ratio or percentage of the products were cat beds? Well, in total, 10,000 items were sold and 6,000 out of the 10,000 were cat beds, or six out of 10, or 60%. For the scratching posts, it was 4,000 scratching posts out of 10,000 items total, or four out of 10, or 40%. The last piece of information we need is the fixed costs, which are $40,000. Previously, we used this formula when calculating break-even point but this formula is used only if the company has one product. If we have a company with multiple products, then we use a slightly different version of the formula. The only difference is in red. The denominator now uses the weighted average contribution margin per unit. I'll show you how to calculate that on the next slide. So now we have all the information we need to calculate the break-even point for a company with multiple products. In other words, management is asking, keeping in mind that 60% of our sales are cat beds, how many cat beds and how many scratching posts must we sell to break even? There are three steps to the process. Step one is to calculate the weighted average contribution margin per unit. Here's how we do it. Since we're calculating contribution margin per unit, what is the formula for contribution margin per unit? The formula is sales revenue per unit minus variable cost per unit. So we need to start with sales price per unit. For cat beds, it's $44 per cat bed. For scratching posts, it's $100 per post. Then we need to subtract variable cost per unit. For the cat beds, it's $24 per unit. For the scratching post, it's $30 per unit. 
Next, we take the sales price per unit and subtract the variable cost per unit, which gives us the contribution margin per unit. For cat beds, it's $20 per bed. For a scratching post, it's $70 per post. Now we need to calculate the sales mix in units. Sales mix for these two products could be described in one of three ways. 6,000 cat beds to 4,000 scratching posts, or 6,000 to 4,000. It could also be broken down to six beds to four posts by dividing both sides by a thousand just to give us smaller numbers to work with. They are still the same ratio. If we wanted to convert it to the least common denominator, it could be described as three to two. So when we calculate the weighted average contribution per unit, we can either use 6,000 to 4,000 or six to four or three to two they are all proportionally the same, so we can use whichever ratio we like. I will choose to use six to four. Remember the six represents the cat bits, and the four represents the scratching posts. So that means we multiply six times a $20 contribution margin per unit to give us contribution margin of $120 for the cat bits. For the scratching posts, we are using the six to four sales mix. So the four represents the scratching posts. So we multiply the four times the $70 contribution margin per unit to give us $280 of contribution margin for the scratching posts. Now for the total column, we add the six and the four to get 10 units. If we had chosen to use the three to two ratio, the total would be five. And we would have multiplied cat beds by three instead of six. And we would have multiplied scratching posts by two instead of four. So it doesn't matter which of the equivalent sales mixes you use. They will all generate the same weighted average, which we will calculate in a minute. The next step is to add the $120 contribution margin for the six cat beds to the $280 contribution margin for the four scratching posts, which gives us a total of $400. Now we can finally calculate the weighted average contribution margin per unit. To do that, we take the $400 from the total row and divide by the 10 units in the total row to give us $40. This represents the average contribution margin per unit assuming a six to four sales mix of cat beds to scratching posts. Now we'll use this $40 weighted average contribution unit on the next slide. The next task is to complete step two. Calculate the break-even point in units for the package of products. The package of products means a sales mix of 60% cat beds and 40% scratching posts, or in other words, a sales mix of six to four. Previously, we used this formula when calculating break-even point, but this formula is used only if the company has one product. Since we have a company with multiple products, we instead use a slightly different version of the formula. The only difference is in the red. The denominator now uses the weighted average contribution margin per unit, which we calculated on the previous slide. So we can't use the original formula. So all we have to do now is plug in the numbers into our new modified formula. On top, the numerator contains fixed costs, which is $40,000. Next, we need to plug in the target profit. Since we're calculating the break-even point, the target profit is zero. Then in the denominator, we need the weighted average contribution margin per unit which we calculated in the previous slide. So here's a screenshot of our work from the previous slide. Notice the weighted average contribution margin per unit is $40. So we plug that in as a denominator and we get $40,000 plus zero divided by $40 per item gives us 1,000 items. So remember that is the required sales in units. But again, this is for the package of products which assumes a sales mix of six cat beds sold for every four scratching posts sold. 
So now we know the company must sell 1,000 items to break even. Next, we have to calculate how many of those 1,000 items are cat beds and how many are scratching posts. Step three is to calculate the break-even point in units for each product. We do this by multiplying the package break-even point in units by each product's proportion of the sales mix. Here's the calculation for cat bits. If we take the 1,000 items we calculated on the previous slide and multiply it by the 6 tenths or 60% that we figured out previously, the company has to sell 600 cat bits. In this example, the calculations yield round numbers. When the calculations do not yield round numbers, round your answer up to the next whole number. For example, if the answer was 700.1 units, you would round up to 701 units. This will ensure your operating income is not negative. Another way to find out we need to use 6 tenths is from the 6 to 4 ratio. Remember, that means out of every 10 items sold, 6 were cat bits. Next, we calculate the number of scratching posts that need to be sold. We again take 1,000 items needed to be sold to break even, and this time multiply by 4 tenths or 40%, since the sales mix shows the company selling 4 scratching posts out of every 10 items sold. That gives us 400. This means the company needs to sell 400 scratching posts along with the 600 cat beds to break even. Remember, we could have used the 6,000 to 4,000 sales mix or the 3 to 2 sales mix, and we would have come up with the same answer since all the sales mixes are proportionally the same. So what we just calculated is the break-even point in units. We could use this information to calculate the break-even point in sales dollars in case management asked us that question. To convert units to sales dollars, we simply take the 600 units of cat beds that needed to be sold to break even and multiply it by the $44 sales price of the cat bed. And that gives us $26,400 of sales revenue from cat beds. Then we take the 400 units of scratching posts that needed to be sold to break even and multiply it by the $100 sales price of scratching posts. And that gives us $40,000 of sales revenue from the scratching posts. That gives us total sales revenue of $66,400. That means the company needs $66,400 of sales in order to break even. So our final answers to management are, to break even, we need to sell 1,000 items. And since our normal sales mix is six cat beds to four scratching posts, that in turn means we need to sell 600 cat beds, and 400 scratching posts, as we calculate on the previous slide. If management wanted the break-even point in dollars instead of units, on the previous slide we calculated it as $66,400 of sales revenue required to break even. But we should always double check our work to make sure this combination of 1,000 items results in the company breaking even, which means an operating income of zero. Here is the contribution margin income statement that proves that our answer is correct. Notice that for the units, I use 600 for the cat beds and 400 for the scratching posts. Here is the $66,400 of sales revenue required to break even. And when we do all the math after subtracting variable costs and fixed costs, it results in the company breaking even, as evidenced by the operating income being zero. So I've shown you how to calculate the break-even point for a company with multiple products. But what if management asked how many units they must sell to reach an operating income of $1 million? You would use the same formula, but instead of having the target profit be zero, you would set it for $1 million.